Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about Proxmox. Proxmox is something I occasionally tippy toe into here on the channel but I'm well aware that there's a lot of you watching this that have kind of heard the word or maybe you've not even heard it and just simply don't know what it is. Proxmox is arguably one of the best open source virtual machine platforms in the market. You know how everyone talks about network attached storage and goes true NAS, that's the business? Well, when it comes to virtual machines, for me personally, Proxmox has always been the business. And the reason I don't talk about it a lot on the channel is Proxmox is an incredibly relative platform to those that need it. When it comes to NAS software, generally everyone's going to go for something that backs up a lot of your applications, maybe synchronizing with the data on your mobile devices, to watch a bit of movies from the home, that sort of thing. For business use, maybe you've got a bunch of clients. There's a lot of similarities with the deployments. But when it comes to Proxmox, Proxmox is the hypervisor to hypervise all hypervisors. It allows you to run pretty much any virtual machine. You can run multiple virtual machines, and although there are similarities to NAS, it is incredibly bespoke in terms of how you can deploy it, from cloning VMs, high availability across VMs, and although there are paid elements to it, the bulk of Proxmox is completely free. Now, I'm gonna talk about Proxmox a lot more on the channel very, very soon. But the reason I wanted to make this slightly separate video is because of this. This is the GMK Tech K8. It's a little mini PC. And there are a lot of users in the market. Let's put it there so you can see the bloody thing. Using a mini PC is a slightly different kettle of fish. You have storage limitations, of course. Look at the size difference. Can't put hard drives in that, probably. Um, but it runs mostly on NVMEs. So why this one? Well, here's a little something. I'm going to tell you this. And this is pretty much for anyone you follow online that has a YouTube channel. You get emailed a lot. You get a lot of emails from companies trying to launch their products. You get a lot of emails from companies that have got some sort of solution they're working on that want to get some free marketing, that kind of stuff. And sometimes you look at it and go, do you know what? That's actually quite interesting. Any of the YouTubers that you really follow, any of the review sites that you really, really like, they all go through this in the background. And these guys, I've never spoke to them before. And GMK Tech said, do you want to review our little mini PC? But they were one of the only brands that has ever contacted me to specifically ask me to talk about their product with Proxmox. And I was already planning a bunch of videos on Proxmox anyway. And I thought, do you know what? In for a penny, in for a pound. So they sent this. They didn't pay. No money changed hands. Just the unit. It's the usual gig. They sent the unit to me. And straight away, running Proxmox on this, and I'm going to have to swear here, was a dream. This was one of the best mini PCs I've ever run VMs on. Now, why is that? What sets this apart? Well, let's break it down together, shall we? Firstly, the CPU. This rocks an AMD Ryzen 8845HS. I had to look at my notes to make sure I didn't bugger that up. It's part of the AMD 8000 series of processors. 8 core, 16 threads to play with, 3.8 gigahertz that can be burst up to a staggering 5.1 gigahertz clock speed per core. When it comes to Proxmox and BIOS, you really just need BIOS to enable things and Proxmox to do the rest. The reason you use Proxmox rather than, say, Synology's platform that has Synology Virtual Machine Manager or QNAP's Virtualization Station is that's a hypervisor living on top of a file system, or worse, it's a hypervisor living on top of volume, living on top of a storage pool, living on top of a Linux OS. And you want to remove as many layers as possible to keep things efficient, yet powerfully accessible and this did a really good job of allowing it but their cpu also arrives with radeon 780m integrated graphics there that's 2.7 gigahertz of um power there uh, in terms of graphical capability which with vms is paramount now one thing this doesn't have which i sorely wish it did was an oculink port do you remember that gem 10 or gem 12 series we were talking about from ustar a little while ago that was a great little box there for a NAS and it would have been great for VMs as Oculink utilization has improved. This doesn't have it unfortunately, but what it does have is a USB 4 port and we're seeing more and more crossover between Oculink and USB 4 to a point where docking stations are only around the corner if not already available by the time you're watching this. Now port and connectivity 2.5 GBE super annoying. It'd be straight with you, super annoying. But 
that USB 4 port means 10 GBE can be added, but that's an additional purchase there. Put the two M.2 NVMe slots inside, and those M.2s are both Gen 4 times 4. There's no downgrade, no reduction. That means both of those slots there have got some serious performance output possible. We did our um, Unraid terminal testing there, and both of those were giving us some great numbers for terminal access, and the lane allocation of Gen 4 times 4 obviously meaning that because Proxbox will still need to run from an SSD inside, we can still continue to run the VMs from within Proxmox and raid the two drives together to give ourselves a little raid failover or have a second high performance drive for all of our VMs. Two Gen 4 times 4 slots is beefy as hell for such a small little system. And cooling and ventilation, let's not overlook that, because if you're going to be running an absolute shit ton of different VMs all at once, it's going to get hot. The system has a base-mounted um, operational fan there. We have ventilation pans there on each side, each one mesh covered. And if you look around the edge of the system, the whole of it has ventilation located all the way around that top panel there. Now, I'm not wholly in love with the plastic chassis there. That really hacks me off if I'm honest but it's going to be great to see once we really push this thing to its boundaries for VMs what exactly it's going to be like in terms of temps. Moving directly into Proxmox why is it that I thought this did such a great job? Well nice and simple as you hopefully can see here on screen I deployed 10 Windows 10 VMs on this I did little different jobs on them and ran the whole thing from this and it barely made a dent. In terms of power consumption when it was idle, and that was with all of the VMs undeployed, but ready for bespoke deployment. I had one VM running at least, just to you know test the water. It was simply 11 to 12 watts, which based on that CPU was sort of bonkers. Now, when I had the one uh, VM running there and an extra storage drive inside there, ready in active um, creation, then it went up to 19 to 21 watts, which again, isn't too shabby. But when we were running all the virtual machines, so that was again 10 VMs, it only went up to between 30 and 40 watts. It was very hard to gauge because it was flicking up and down quite considerably as different VMs were pulling. Now they were all clones of the same architecture there and I didn't max out all the hardware. But what I mean is I was running 10 Windows VMs on this and it was still running fine. The system running 10 virtual machines of Windows 10 Pro did a damn fine job and I completely understand why they reached out to me to specifically talk about this and Proxmox because I think this might be one of the best little nooks I've ever used or fake nooks if you will to run virtual machine environments and this is the system we're going to be exploring Proxmox for which is kind of the other big reason for this video. What do you want to see? If I'm going to talk about Proxmox more on this channel Let's face it, Proxmox is, you know, explored very, very well on other platforms. I strongly recommend you checking out some of the other YouTube channels that we've collaborated with here on the channel who have done fantastic stuff with Proxmox. But I want to know what you want me to talk about in the conjunction of NAS. We're going to be testing them all on this and putting this little sod through its paces. Windows VMs, Hackintosh perhaps, or running different bespoke VMs. They're testing the high availability and ultimately putting this thing through its paces because right now I've only had it in my hands a few days and I don't think my testing of this is going to fit everyone's needs so I want you to tell me workflows and setups that you want to see and we'll try to hammer as many as we can into a single video putting this thing through its paces and see if these guys are going to regret sending this to me. Thank you so much for watching I know it's been a brief video not really a review but I still wanted to talk about this more. With that 20 lane CPU and a decent level of customization, there's a lot we can do with this. Let me know what you want to see in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and have yourselves a fantastic week.